Andy Johnson, we are looking at reading fluency, which is the ability to recognize words or read a text quickly. Why is this important? Reading fluency is related to enhanced comprehension. The quicker you can read, the more fluent you can read, the more you can read. It takes you 20 minutes to do your homework if you're fairly fluent or 60 minutes to do the same homework. As well, reading rate and volume are correlated with academic achievement. As you see, as the levels of fluency go up, so too do NAEP achievement reading scores go up as well. Things that impede or get in the way. Round robin reading. That's where you go around the room. Everyone reads it out loud because students are so afraid of making a mistake. They go word by word so they don't make a mistake. And an overemphasis on phonics, word by word reading, letter by letter. Again, you give up meaning to focus on accuracy. And when you're not focusing on meaning, you're reading word by word. Ways to assess it, uh, assess it, words per minute, words per half minute, or short passage fluency. And SPF is talked about in another video. Things to be done to improve. Of course, independent reading is related to improvements in vocabulary, comprehension, fluency, word knowledge, everything. Teacher read aloud so you get a sense for the structure of the language. Repeated reading activities, there's a whole bunch of different ones. And of course, daily writing, letter sound associations, and develop the syntactic cueing, grammar and word order. Repeated reading, the basics. What is it? It's used to develop reading fluency to strengthen those neural pathways so you recognize words just microseconds quicker. It's like practicing scales in music. Da 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 da. So you are able to do it quicker, faster letter sound association, faster word recognition. The basics. Students work with the body, can be done in a large group, or you can do it individually. If you're working with the body, one person reads as many words as possible in one minute or 30 seconds if that's too overwhelming. The teacher says, go. Students in the room all start reading. One is the reader, the other buddy keeps track to make sure they don't skip any words. Stop after one minute or 30 seconds, record the number of words, and repeat the same person does it three times in a row. Words per minute or words per half minute. And then students record their times. Each student has a graph, either a line graph or a bar graph. And they can see themselves getting better each day. This is one day, another day, and another day. Body of research is uh, can support this as developing fluency. Students can see their progress. There's that self-efficacy thing. They see themselves getting better. It actually works. And I encourage teachers always adopt and adapt these activities. Here are a couple other strategies. Reread to meet standard. Find a piece of reading at a grade level, a graded reader or a leveled reader. Set a goal for the number of words. I'm going to read 50 words, and this is the time I'm going to get, or 100 words. The students then reread until they meet that standard or goal. You can use a zone of proximal development to get just a little ahead of students. Here, for an example, number of tries, etc. And bar graph to record your results. It took me five tries, three tries, two tries, etc. Adopt and adapt. And of course, the older peer tutor, older students work with a younger to help tutor or to read the book with them. It develops fluency for the older reader because it gives them an excuse to read books at their independent level and below. By the way, with reading practice, students should be reading books at their independent level and below to develop reading fluency and other things. They should not be reading hard books. Choral reading, you have a book, a text, you read it together, the teacher points to the words as you are reading. It can be done in small group or individually. If you're working with a group, you'll have a chart like you see there, or an overhead or a screen, or everyone has a copy of the text together. Ideally, 
if you're working with a group, you have it where everyone can see and the teacher can point to the words and you keep it moving. Echo reading is where the teacher reads a sentence and then the students read it back. There's that echo thing. This is done usually at the kindergarten and first grade level. Readers theater is where you give them a story and you create the script to either you or the students. You have narrators, characters, and sound effects. <clears throat> I like to do this with a story that students have read or you can buy commercial products, Readers Theater. Why does it develop fluency? Students practice their part, they rehearse, should be an E there, the play, and they go over it and over it again. It gives them an excuse to practice it again. Some basic ideas for reading fluency.